is it possible to know the sex of a T-Rex or any of the other dinosaurs? Like what, what can paleontology show us? So in theory, yes. In practice, it's way more complicated. So unless you get very lucky, we have a handful of specimens that still have eggs inside them. Instant giveaway. Um, but that's like two or three. Um, what you can look for is both reptiles and birds have a thing called medullary bone. And when you're laying eggs and you need a lot of calcium very quickly, so the, the, that egg shell goes on basically like kind of like the last minute during egg development. So you need a lot of calcium very quickly. So during the laying season, these animals grow this really weird kind of bone texture on big things like the femur and the humerus, like really big bones in the body. And that's it's got a weird texture because it's full of blood vessels and it's full of blood vessels so that you can basically apply a lot of blood supply to it quickly, suck up some of the calcium from that bone, take it through the system, put it on the eggs, lay your eggs. We can find that. So if you have a dinosaur bone and it's the right kind of thing, so you can't do it on like a finger or a claw or a bit of rib, but nice big bone, you could cut a chunk of that out, grind it down to the point that it's virtually transparent, fraction of a millimeter thick, put it under a microscope and have a look. And if you see the right bone texture, that's there. there's some exceptions, but that's very probably medullary bone and you have yourself a female. So the instant assumption is, okay, so you can tell female from male. No, we can tell laying female from everything else. So males won't have medullary bone. Young females won't have them. Females outside of the breeding season won't have it. Females inside the breeding season, but maybe they've been really sick this year don't have it, or they laid their eggs early and now they don't need it anymore, won't have it. So occasionally, if you cut up a bone, which of course we try not to do that much, you can get the signal of medullary bone and infer that you have a female in the breeding season. But so there's no like large bone structure differences. Well, maybe there is, but we haven't seen it. You look at things like... Um, kudu or um, black buck and all kinds of antelope or even most deer and the males have horns or antlers and the females don't and then you look at something like triceratops and all the ceratopsians it's a big clade of oh must be 40 species by now and every single one of them has the frill and has some kind of horn somewhere you don't have the hornless ones or the frillless ones in the way that we do with a lot of these. I'm, I'm trying to figure out how, is there how many of the species is it obvious that there's uh, like like pelvis differences, all that. So, kind of so stuff. pelvis differences works on like humans and apes and maybe a couple of other mammals, but it's mostly not very good because we are, it's because we give birth to such a gigantic baby com with a gigantic head compared to our sizes that women have different pelvises to men. And then there's size differences, like the skull is not as it's, reliable as it's the pelvis. Not, and then again, you just need to look at, you know, humans are always slightly dodgy with this because of, you know, our evolutionary his and cultural history. But like, you know, there's there's population differences. You know, you you there are there are main female lions in places. There are mainless male lions in places. Um reindeer, uh female reindeer have antlers in winter. So Rudolph was a girl because every illustration of Santa and his reindeer ever has, they all have antlers and that's, that's a female reindeer, not a male if it's winter. So basically we don't know much about the dating and the sex lives of uh, T-Rexes. Well, not much, but you can make some inferences. So for example, um, all Tyrannosaurs, uh, have at least some kind of crest on the head. The early ones have like this midline crest. It, it really doesn't work on a human. They have like a midline crest running along the top of the nose that sticks up. The later ones largely don't, but they do have this weird armored structure along those fused nasals. And then they have little horns over the eyes. Those, as far as we can tell, don't really have any kind of obvious mechanical function and loads like Outside of the feathered dinosaurs, the vast majority of dinos of carnivorous dinosaurs have some kind of crest or display feature on the head. When you say display feature, meaning for sex appeal, to attract mates. Or something like that. So I, I've always favored the term socio-sexual selection to cover both sexual display and sexual dominance and communication, um, but also social ones, because those two things are hard to tell apart. Female lions find males with darker manes sexier but male lions find males with darker manes more intimidating. 
So one of them is sex, but one of them is social. Nice. Uh, then, they're, they're, they're like, I mean, I guess it goes hand in hand. Sure. It, yeah. it, it can, but then you get things like the other one I go for is uh, black swans, these beautiful Australian birds. They have these really weird curly feathers on their wings. And males and females both have them. And males prefer females with curlier feathers, and females prefer males with curlier feathers as an obvious sexual link. But then females fight too. Females fight over the best nesting spots. And the females with the curliest feathers tend to win those fights. How does that make sense? This gets into classic sexual selection theory. It's, it's what's called an honest signal. You couldn't have those curly feathers if you weren't able to support them. Oh, because they're their yeah. primary feathers on the wings. And what it actually does is it makes it harder to fly. So you're basically going, look how tough I am. I've grown this big and I can fly and carry on with my giant curly feathers because I'm really tough and I'm in good shape. And it's the same with the lion. The reason you get pale lions in the south is because it's or close to the equator because it's too hot. So there's the trade-off because if you have a really black mane, yeah, all the males know you're rock and all the females know you're super sexy, but you just die of overheating. The trade-off is if the heat's going to kill you, you're probably better off being a bit paler and surviving <laughs> in order to reproduce than you are being jet black but just dying instantly as soon as it gets hot. So there's trade-offs there. Okay. Yeah. And that's probably what's happening with the theropods. The all the little crests and horns, Ceratosaurus, Dilophosaurus, Tyrannosaurs, Allosaurs have big crests over the eyes and all kinds of others. My I've written about this. I think this is the trade-off. You're going for the sexiest look, mm -hmm. and the sexiest look is the biggest horns or the biggest spikes and whatever's on the head, probably also then with the brightest colors and the most display patterns. But also, this, this gives you a way to your prey. If you're trying to hide or you're trying to sneak up on something, being brightly colored or having stripes or all this extra stuff on your head, you, you, you get spotted. Mm -hmm. But then that's the trade-off, is... If I'm this big and my horns are if my horns are this big and this red and yellow and I can still whoop I can still run those guys down and hunt them and kill them and eat them yeah then look how great I must be whereas that little guy he's only got weedy little crests and they're and they're really dark because he's so bad at catching stuff he doesn't have the extra energy to grow big crests and so and that's why but when you're a herbivore you don't have that pressure Particularly something like, this is protoceratops, but something like triceratops and these guys, they're living in big groups. You can't hide from a predator when you're a group of 20 animals that are 10 tons each. So who cares? You just grow the biggest signal you can possibly grow, and lo and behold, they have giant frills and giant horns.